afternoon, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. Got a couple of links I want to share with you guys. I'll leave them down in the description for you. Talking about the central bank digital currencies. Now, I know I've been talking a lot about central bank digital currencies lately, but I think it's a really big issue that is coming up. Now, I know a lot of people will probably argue with me on this one, but it is in my opinion that the whole purpose of a central bank digital currency is to take interest rates into negative territory. That is what I have believed since the very beginning. Now, I will leave a link down in the description for you guys to an IMF blog talking about how it is that the federal or the central banks, I should say, not just the Federal Reserve, but the central banks can use use these digital currencies in order to an, implement a cashless society so that they can take interest rates negative because they know that if they were to take negative interest rates to people's deposits, like you go and you put your paycheck in the bank and it has a negative interest rate to it, you would pull your money out in cash and you would be like, I'm not leaving any money in the bank. And they know that people are going to do this. And so that they cannot put a negative interest rates on your deposits if you can pull your money out in cash. So they're going to implement the central bank digital currency, pull all the cash out, and now they will be able to take interest rates as deep into negative territory as they want. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't pull your money out and out of the bank because there is no money to pull out. Now, there's going to be a lot of cash left in the system. So the way they're going to get that cash out of the system is they're going to charge you to deposit and they're going to charge you to withdraw. And that amount that they deposit or that you deposit or withdraw, the amount that they charge on that, the fee, is going to be matching to the negative interest rate that is a, that is attached to the central bank digital currencies. So no matter what you do, if, even if you had the cash, you're going to end up paying for it by p depositing it in the bank. So that's going to make it a very, very, um, it's going to be a nuisance essentially to stores and to even the black market. Because ultimately, if you cannot take your cash and go down and spend it at the store as freely as you could in the, in the black market, then even the black market's not going to want that cash. Because ultimately, the whole purpose of having the cash is that you can go and spend it into the economy. But if you can't spend it into the economy as easily or as effectively or as losing value because of the deposit fees that you have to go to the bank with, then most people are just going to naturally go over to the central bank digital currency where they won't have that issue. So that's kind of what I see taking place with these central bank digital currencies. And now, if you read the article... Fed Governor Brainerd says that she cannot wrap her head around the idea of the central bank digital currencies not existing. Like, she cannot wrap her head around the idea of there being no central bank digital currencies. She can't wrap her head around that. And now, I find it very odd, considering that just six months ago, the Federal Reserve was saying, yeah, we're not really even looking at central bank digital currencies at this point, or at least not implementing them at this point. We are doing the research and all that, but nowhere in our game are we actually intending on setting up and using the central bank digital currencies. But yet Brainerd's saying that she cannot wrap her head around the idea of not having them. I, I found that very interesting. So somebody isn't really telling the truth there, right? Either six months ago, they were dead set on creating these central bank digital currencies, or they weren't. I feel that they were, saying that they weren't really. But right now, you got Brainerd who is saying that she cannot wrap her head around the idea of not having them. So that's pretty well committed to me. Like, if she's saying she cannot wrap her head around the idea of not having it, then it is of my belief that they have full intention on running the central bank digital currency and they're probably going to do it sooner than later. That's my opinion on it. Now, of course, they're going to push it out there to the people as a benefit. They're going to be able to pass out stimulus checks easier or say, you know, help people out during a natural disaster or I don't know. They're just going to have like a bunch of, you know, benefits to the people, uh, banking the unbanked. I mean, they have like all these ideas, but ultimately it's so that they can run a negative interest rate. That's the whole point of the central bank digital currencies. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say, well, how do you protect yourself from this? There's really no way you can. You would have to have all your money in investments. Like you'd have to have it all into the stock market or try and find some sort of bond market out there where you're going to get an interest rate 
that is going to beat inflation, which is very difficult to do right now, uh, at least in my opinion, if you're going to hold a bond onto maturity. So really, there's not a lot of places that you're going to be able to go to that is going to preserve your wealth. Now, I personally, I like the idea of holding silver and gold. But I don't hold silver and gold to necessarily preserve my wealth. I use it as an insurance policy to help me out in case I get into trouble, which I have in the past. There was times when my car broke down and I couldn't buy a new car or replace it or fix it. I was able to pull out some silver out of a box that I have and trade it to a buddy of mine who had a Tahoe. I mean, I've done it twice now that I've traded silver for cars. So when I get into a pinch and I don't have any money, I use silver as my insurance policy. The nice thing about silver is that it's away from any third party issues. Bank, you know, banks go get in trouble and lock their doors and you can't get in. Now what? They have all your money. You know, stock portfolio, you have, you know, an account with an online broker. One day you can't log in. Now what do you do? All the wealth that most people have is tied up inside of an asset that they really don't even have access to. And if they do, then they would have to take out like equity loans or something like that or sell off their portfolio. When you have silver and gold, you can really pull out a very small amount of it and deal with the problems that you have at the time that you're having them. That is pretty cool to have that, avail have that availability to you. And then also Bitcoin. I know a lot of people don't like the idea of Bitcoin or this, even anything digital currencies. I get it. I, I mean, I understand the reasonings why. It's very simple idea to think that if there is no electricity, then you have no money. And that would be, that would be a pretty tough situation to try and navigate through if you have no power. And that's all your wealth is tied up in Bitcoin. So... I hold Bitcoin, I hold silver. Those are my two main places that I like to go to. I also hold cash. Most of it is in the bank. And the reason why I put it in the bank is because at some point I would like to take out a loan for a home. I'm not exactly excited about it, but I would like to have a piece of property at some point in my life. Now, if it is a loan that I need to take out, I would like to have the money in the bank so that I have proof of where it came from. A lot of times people will question you if all of a sudden you just show up with thousands of dollars in your hand and they're like, man, where do you get all this money from? So if you already have it in the bank, there is no question on how come you have it. It's, just, it's already there. So that's the main reason why I keep most of my money in the bank. I don't like the idea of it. I, you know, It does concern me that at some point we could have a bank failure and then I wouldn't have access to that money. But that concern is pretty low on the grand scheme of things. Even the central bank digital currency, if they were to you know, start issuing out a central bank digital currency to the people, it is going to be many years, I feel, down the road before they would ever try to ever take like the cash out of the system, try to take the deposits to negative. They will wait until they absolutely need to to try and do anything that is going to be remotely close to like wealth confiscation through the central bank digital currency. They want people to use it. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised that when they first start using it or pushing it out there to the people and people start using it back and forth on one, with one another, that they would even allow black market stuff to take place, you know, illegal transactions, so to speak. If they were to do that, the confidence that people would have in it would grow dramatically. So, although these things seem like they move very fast, really, I think it's going to take time. I think it's slow, grind, tapping of that wedge that will eventually, you know, push the that central bank digital currency, that whole idea, that's what will eventually push it into the system. It's slow, methodical grinds. Um, anyway, uneducated economist. You guys let me know.